Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for our Higher Education Graduation Ceremony. My name is Jay Dotty and I'm Vice Principal at Exeter College and I'm delighted to be acting as your Master of Ceremonies this afternoon. Graduation is one of the highlights of the academic year and although we cannot be all together this year, we are really proud of your success and congratulate you in achieving your higher educational studies, especially under such circumstances. We're really looking forward to hearing from a number of people this afternoon. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to John Laramie, Principal and Chief Executive of Exeter College. Uh, Lord Mayor, High Sheriff, ladies, gentlemen, and most critically our graduates, a very, very warm welcome to this year's slightly different graduation. The class of 2020 will be remembered as a class who learned new skills and graduated in a slightly different world. But you've all developed a suite of skills that will stay with you for life. Digital skills, adaptability, resilience, and understanding that hard work, talent and tenacity brings results in all circumstances. Higher education and higher level study is really important to me as in 1992, I myself was a student here at Exeter College. The Prime Minister came to the college on uh, a few Tuesdays ago and talked about the importance of higher level technical skills to the economy and to the future of this country. I was very pleased, or I am very pleased, that in April 21, we will open a new £10 million centre and Institute of Technology uh, building here as part of the South West Institute of Technology Development. In addition, we're soon to open the Future Skills Centre out at Exeter International Airport. For the first time, this will give higher education and higher level students here at the college at a home, uh, even a cafe in the Institute of Technology, at uh, just for adults and higher education learners, so that you will have some outstanding accommodation that matches the outstanding teaching that you get, as evidenced by the Teaching Excellence Framework. As students, we've listened to your feedback, and that's where these developments have come from. A key part of our success, and the, the success of our higher level uh, provision here at the college, is the partnership we have with our university partners. The University of Exeter, Plymouth Margin University, Kingston University, the University of Plymouth, and also I'd like to thank our awarding bodies, Pearson and City and Girls, who we work with so closely. It's your support, your challenge, your encouragement that helps to make us such a successful provider of higher education. I'd like to say a few words about one of our special higher education partners, the University of Exeter. We're really fortunate that we work in such close partnership with the University of Exeter and the schools to form uh, a cohesive and effective ecosystem for education uh, within Exeter. And I think that's something that puts the city of Exeter and the wider region in a really good place uh, for what comes next as the country emerges uh, from the real challenge of the global pandemic. There's currently ongoing work nationally to describe the College of the Future and also an FE white paper that's due in the autumn. However, I think if you want to see the future, I suggest you look at Exeter, where schools, the university, the college, civic and private organisations and businesses all work together for the good of the city and the region. To show my age, I feel a little bit like Marty McFly uh, as I say that. I'd now like to say a few words about our guest of honour, Ben Page, Chief Executive of Ipsos Murray. He joined Murray in 1987 after graduating from Oxford University in 1986. He was one of the leaders of its first management buyout in 2000, a frequent writer and speaker on trends, leadership and performance management. He's also dedicated and directed at thousands of surveys examining customer trends and citizen behaviour. From 1987 to 1992, Ben worked for Maury in the private sector business on corporate reputation and customer research, working for companies such as Shell, BA Systems, Sky and IBM. Since 1992, he's worked closely with both Conservative and Labour governments and senior policymakers around government leading uh, work and doing work for Downing Street, the Cabinet Office, the Home Office, the Department for Health, as well as a wide range of local authorities and NHS trusts. He became Chief Executive of Ipsos in, U in the UK and Ireland in 2009. Ben is also a visiting professor at King's College London and a Fellow of the Academy of Social Sciences. 
He serves on a number of advisory groups and is connected to several charities. He's a council member at the CBI for London. Ben was named one of GQ's 100 Most Connected Men in 2015 and he regularly appears on national TV and radio programmes. For us at Exeter College, the thing we're most proud of is that Ben was an Exeter College student. Another great example of the power of great state-funded education. It's a real pleasure for me to invite Ben to say a few words. Good afternoon, everybody, and I'm really sorry I can't be with you. So my name's Ben Page. I'm the chief executive of Ipsos Mori in the UK. Uh, I've worked here for 33 years, uh, so a pretty long time. I studied uh, as part of my education at Exeter College, and it was like, because I come from Exeter, and it was one of the best parts of my student experience as a whole, I'd say. So Ipsos Mori, for those of you who don't know us, well, many, some of you may associate us with politics and who's going to win on election at election nights and the exit poll that we do for the BBC and ITV. And uh, if, you, if you see us in the newspapers, that will be most commonly what you'll associate us with. But actually, opinion polls and who you're going to vote for, political polling, that's only about 0.1% of what we actually do. Our biggest clients in, in the UK are people like Google, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, Facebook, and indeed the National Health Service and the British government. So many of you might have been approached by us uh, on behalf of the National Health Service asking you to take a COVID-19 blood test or swab test for antigens or antibodies to see if you've got this disease, which is of course stopping me being with you in person today. And I'd, it would be great to be back in Exeter. To, I can see my dad, if nothing else. But here we are. So, you know, I'm glad that you, congratulations to everybody who's uh, graduating today. Lots of hard work and dedication and application so far. And I hope that the next stages of your career, even in this weird, weird world that we live in and the next, you know, are, which is unpredictable, are, are what, you would, what you would want them to be. And I was wondering to myself what my advice would be to my 18-year-old or 19-year-old self, which was how old I was when I finished at Exeter College. Um, and I thought the first thing was, well, of course, I wouldn't pay any attention to an old git like that. So um, some of you can switch off now. But because actually when by the time you get to your 50s 18 doesn't seem that long ago although it must seem an extraordinarily distant time in the past to imagine yourself to be in your 50s when you've just finished uh, college what i would say first of all is that you know embrace your passions so one of the things i learned at exeter was when i i became fascinated by was my love of history and that actually has stayed with me to this day uh, it has led me to spend a lot of time in italy uh, it led me to choose which degree to do at university and it's massively enriched my life in all sorts of ways. Even though my day-to-day -day job, which is understanding why people do the things they do or how many people are doing the things they do, um, has in some ways, on the face of it, not so much to do with history. But actually, I think you always find a way of making your study, you always take things that you learn in your studies and can apply them to other parts of your life. So. Uh, I, I thought about the advice that um, I would uh, want to hear as an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old or a 20-25-year-old. And I think the first thing is that obviously academic success and passing exams is, you know, and qualifications, as you've done here, is hugely important. But interestingly, in terms of what actually happens after you leave college, as much will be about your own enthusiasm, your own hard work and your curiosity as your ability to pass exams, which was a great relief to me because I wasn't absolutely brilliant at exams. I did pretty well, but uh, there were plenty of people who did much better than me. And I think that's the first, the first point. Turning up, enthusiasm, being there for people, these sorts of things, they're not about, that's not about passing exams. And those things will also help you in your career. The other thing is to keep an open mind, particularly when you're younger. Um, nobody knows how their career will pan out. I had no intention of staying in Ipsos Mori, uh, the company where I'm now the chief exec, having started as a graduate trainee. I had no intention of staying here for more than two or three years. It's so my, me being the CEO in many ways is a complete accident. So don't be too prescriptive on yourselves. If you look after yourselves, statistically, many of you in this room have a good chance of making it to 100 years old. And that means you've got an awful long life. You may do two or three different careers. So don't be too prescriptive about what you're going to do. 
Finally, a few more things. Most careers don't proceed in a linear fashion. I was never the favourite to be the chief executive. 20 years ago, people would have laughed at the idea of me being the chief executive. In fact, for the last 11 years, quite successfully, because I was seen as too difficult or too chippy or something. So, you know, you can never, you can never quite tell what's going to happen with people, people's careers. Boris Johnson, who I was at university with, you know, uh, many people never thought he'd amount to anything. And look, he's Prime Minister. So you never know what's going to happen. Um, and there are all sorts, I think, in your career, all sorts of false starts. People will switch, you'll change things. Many people will end up doing quite a different sort of job than the one they originally, originally envisaged, or indeed even sometimes the one that they, tra they train for. Um, so, you know, keep an open mind, be good to yourself, work hard. When we ask chief executives of Britain's largest companies what their advice is to young people, they say all sorts of things about learning to listen, which is always a good idea, um, getting experience in a whole wide range of different parts of the business, maybe even some international experience. But the top thing that they answer every time we ask them, year after year, year after year, is hard work. And, you know, juggling all of those things in your life, particularly at times when you may feel that you're failing in everything, in your relationships, in raising children, in your career, that's part of the art of, of, of managing. And, but it's so interesting that I know very few people who have got to the top of their careers without working hard. There may be a few very lucky, really clever, brilliant people, unlike me, but most people will have to put in the hours. And so that's the, you know, and that again doesn't require the ability to work to pass exams. It requires the ability to be focused and to apply yourself. Um, at the same time, if you're going to work hard in your career, be kind to yourself and kind to other people. People always, as, as Mary Angelou famously puts it, always remember, they don't remember what you did, they remember how you made them feel. And that applies to everybody else that you work with during your career. Be good to other people, treat them the way you want to be treated. Do take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. You know, the idea that, you know, the person who said, oh, well, I think I'll just stay in and have an early night. Um, they missed that opportunity to go and do that TV interview or whatever it was, and they didn't get the next opportunity. So take advantage of those opportunities that come, their, come your way. And that's all from me, really. Uh, it, you know, have a great time. It's a brilliant, it's, Exeter College for me was a brilliant place to study. I hope it has been for you too. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody does afterwards. Um, it's great to work hard, it really matters. Um, but overall, remember, it's a marathon and not a sprint. And, you know, lots of, lots of unfor unforeseen twists and turns along the way. Nobody quite knows what's going to happen. But with a little bit of help, we can all make a big difference. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ben, for those inspiring words. We now move to the most important part of the ceremony, when we formally acknowledge our students' achievements. Each of the programme managers will announce their graduating students. We begin with courses awarded by the University of Exeter. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have, who have achieved a BA Ordinary in Business Management. Ahid Cheno Thiantho, Paul Daniel Espiritu, Sophie Moyle, Luke Sage, Toby Smith, Lewis Trist, Bryony Whitehurst. Can I say from all of the teaching team in Babham what a pleasure it's been to watch you as a group grow in your academic skills your knowledge, your depth of researching has been a joy to watch and the pleasure is you're all going forward as a cohort in its entirety to Exeter University to complete your honours year. We wish you so much success. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a certificate in education. Eloise Abbott Hayley Hawkins, Ben Higgins, Harriet Johnston, George Reed, Cheryl Rees, John Sleeman, Charlotte Sperry, Jonathan Took, and Emma Watson. 
I want to congratulate you on all of your hard work for these past two years, especially alongside your full-time teaching job. That's quite an achievement. On behalf of Pippa and I, I want to say extremely well done. We're really proud of what you've managed to achieve. And I think this country is all the richer for having brilliant teachers like you in it. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Beverly Hawkins and I'm Associate Academic Dean for Students here at the University of Exeter. I chair the partnership board between the University and Exeter College and I'm hugely proud of the fantastic relationship between these two institutions which together do so much to strengthen opportunities for everyone in the region. I'm here to offer you my absolute sincerest congratulations to everyone graduating today. This is an achievement that's made even more remarkable by the circumstances of this year. And as a local girl, I'm always especially delighted to welcome extra college students to the university. So I really hope that I get to see many of you on campus at some point and whatever you do in life. I hope that learning and curiosity and discovery continue to play a role in your future adventures. And I wish you every success and happiness for the next chapter. Now we move on to Kingston University London with Programme Manager Jeff Watson. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a foundation degree in aircraft engineering. Callum Andrews, Matthew Berridge, James Bainan, James Chatfield, Edward Clemo Crosby, George Folland, Kieran Fuller, Jake Gilbody, Dan Hamilton, Eleanor Harvey, Anthony Hobson, Ezra Holman. George McConnellog, Ethan Millard, Connor Moore, Chaz Knott, Asher Patet, James Plumer, Morgan Ross, Joshua Timmins, Mark Tuck, Shalom Varagazi, Todd Williams, Lewis Williams, and that completes the students who have graduated this year, who I have to say have done exceptionally well given the challenging circumstances of COVID-19 and the collapse of Flybe. Well done all. It's a pleasure to get a chance to say a brief word to you on your graduation. This is a very special day and I hope you're able to enjoy it, despite the various constraints on social distancing. First off, congratulations on completing a challenging course. I've been involved with the Kingston University Foundation degree in aircraft engineering from its very inception, and I know how hard you've had to work to achieve it. It's almost 20 years since we launched this program and it's been a great success. The combination of a licensed course with a strong academic program is a very attractive combination. The blend of academic and practical skills it delivers is well suited to the uncertain environment we are all facing. You have the option of going straight into industry and doing no more academic study. You can continue on to a part-time degree, top up whilst you work, or you can continue with one more full-time year of academic study. There are advantages to each approach, but Kingston would certainly like to hear from you if you want to study further. The strong set of skills you've acquired will be required for the aviation industry as it recovers from its current unprecedented challenge. They will also support you in whatever field you choose to pursue. The fact that you've had to face these challenges and completed the course will help prepare you to face the challenges ahead. Although I don't want to dwell on the challenges ahead, just to reassure you that you'll be able to overcome them. Today is a day for celebration, so enjoy it to the full. You've come a long way and now is a chance to celebrate that achievement. Well done, and good luck with your future endeavours. Next, we have our Pearson awarded courses. Hi, I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a higher national certificate in business. 
Mahir Ahmed, Jack Beish, William Collinson, Louis Dixon, Olivia Dupont, Rosika Evtimova, Louise Fisher, Josie Howick, Jack Miller and Neve Scott. And also those who have achieved a nas higher national diploma in business, Lavinia Carr, Tom Earle, Tori Gillink, Stefan Hammond, Aaron Howard, Abd al Kamari, Abigail Lang, George May, Sam Miller, Annabelle Raidermaker, and Alex Wrigley. I really just want to say to you all, I'm so proud of all of the work and effort that you put in last year. It was a really difficult year and you completed your studies, you committed to every lesson online, um, you were a joy to teach both in the classroom and out and I genuinely wish you all the best for whatever you're doing this year. Those of you who are with me, we are definitely going to have a better year in some way, shape or form. And those of you who've gone elsewhere, I really do wish you all the best with whatever you're doing and please do keep in touch and let us know what you're doing. Thanks. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved an HNC in civil engineering. Jayesh Elson, Tom Faulkner, Thomas Panicat, Jack David Powell, Tim Power, Adam Trigal. It has been an absolute pleasure I wish you all the best for your future. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved an HNC in computing. Lewis Boyles, Adam Brownjohn, Tom Clist, Lewis Griffiths, James Elliott, Ryan Greensmith, Stuart Jeffrey, Matthew Jonas, Andrew McKinder, Jack Marshall, Robert Parker, Max Richardson, Hannah Tucker, Harry Watson, and those who achieved an HND in computing, James Bolt, Nick Ellis, Micah Jupp, Jack Marshall, Chris Pritchard, Samuel Richards, Louise Rowland, Owen Quinton. We wish you all the best of luck in your future careers and we hope you revisit the college as guest speakers in the future. Good luck and well done. I have the great pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved an HNC in construction. George Kreese, James Goodwin, Sam Homewood, Dan Huxtable, Jack Llewellyn Dare, Sam Mould, Dan Reynolds, Kirsty Salter, and Rebecca Tennant. Well done, guys, you worked hard and uh, you thoroughly deserve. Uh, the, the certificate. Well done. Cheers. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a HNC in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Adam Bainbridge, Thomas Bully, Tom Butland, Sam Charters, Sam Dednam, Bradley Evans, Tom Fry, Dylan Grogan, Andrew Heavens, Alex Penhullerick, Mackenzie Simcox, Scott Stevens, Ben Choi, Daniel White, Owen Whitney, Paul Winthorpe and Callum Youngman and also those who've achieved a HNC in Manufacturing Engineering, Callum Budge, James Moran, Toby Pepperell, Carl Vilsons, Aaron Weeks and Isaac White and finally those who've achieved a HNC in Mechanical Engineering which are Nick Aitken, Owen Fisher, Daniel Forward, Kieran Goss, Jack Harbour, Edward Haskell, Nathan Hooper, Daniel Langley, Wilbert Purser Mountford, Joe Fippard, Jordan Pinter, Liam Sinclair, Edward Webb, and finally Connor Whitby. And I would just like to say a huge congratulations to you all. It's been an amazing year. Uh, you've, uh, the effort you've put in has been spectacular and I wish you all the best for your future. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved an HND in music. Ophelia Pierce, Finn Rawlings, Joe Reeve and Wes Richmond. 
Uh, from me and the t music team, from James Tarling, uh, wherever he is, uh, I'd just like to say what a wonderful uh, time we had with you over the last two years and just what an amazing job you've done. So we wish you all the very best with your future studies and your future musical lives. So uh, thank you again from us and good luck. We now move to our Plymouth Margin University awarded courses. Okay, I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a foundation degree in coaching and fitness. Courtney Butt, Ben Chandler-Payne, Aidan Gallagher, Alex Saunders, Chloe Smith, Beth Wyatt. Congratulations on completing the course and we wish you all the best for the future. I have the pleasure of presenting the following students who have achieved a foundation degree in football coaching and development. Owen Castle, Josh Gilmore, Max Hammett, Liam Perry Fox, George Pittman and Aidan Windia. I just wanted to say congratulations to all of you guys. I absolutely loved teaching you for the two years that we had together and I'm really sorry that your graduation couldn't be done in person in the cathedral um, and I hope wish you the best in, in all of your careers going forward. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a foundation degree in sports therapy. James Ashforth, Lawrence Kavanagh, Daniel Dempsey, Lauren Dyer, Sophie Lyon, Edward Mills, Spencer Nicholson, Scott Pierce, Daisy Peters, Isla Quick, Jacob Smith, Carla Stapleton, Macy Toos, and Sarah Warren. Congratulations on completing your foundation degree and I wish you all the best in the future. Hello, I'm Professor Ian Luke, Pro Vice-Chancellor here at Plymouth Margin University. I'd like to welcome everyone involved today, but most importantly, the class of 2020. I'm delighted to be involved in this wonderful celebration of the talent and hard work of the students and staff at Exeter College. We at Plymouth Margin University are incredibly proud of our partnership with the college. Today we celebrate challenges overcome, personal challenges met, friendships made and values strengthened. I know that many of you will have overcome significant challenges to be able to receive your awards today. But for all of you, your success is a result of the hard work and perseverance supported by the high quality teaching at the college. However, no one can achieve what you've achieved alone. Your friends, and especially your family have supported you for many, many years and I'm sure will continue to help you in the future. The skills and knowledge you've obtained during your degree will remain with you for life. Many of you graduating today will go on to contribute to the vitality and the well-being of the wider area and help to ensure the professionalism of the workforce here in the South West. I am sure that our graduates with us today will use the skills they have learned during their degree to create a wonderful life for themselves, their families and their communities. So whatever you choose to embark upon next, I wish you all the best and know that your achievements at the college will stand you in good stead for a bright future. I'm sure you'll remember your time fondly. Thank you. And now to our University of Plymouth accredited courses. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved an FDA in creative and professional writing. Levi Cardwell, Anita Hobbs, Lily James, Jonathan Paul Jones, Emma Linus, Abby Smith, Charlotte Williams. Well done everyone, congratulations on all of your success. It's been a real pleasure to teach you over these last couple of years and I wish you all the very best for your future, for your careers and your writing. Well done. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved an FDA in Early Childhood Studies, Millie Edwards, Sophie Govier, Stephanie Hodnett, Emma Horrell, Sasha Moyes, Madison Parsons, Ellie Richardson, Jessica Savoir, 
Portia Louise Webb and Chloe Watson. It's been an absolute pleasure to teach you and I'm just really sorry that you're not here face to face today um, to shake your hands but you've been an amazing group, um, worked so so tremendously hard, thank you and best of luck for um, your future successes, well done everybody. Yay! <laughs> okay. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a foundation degree in film and television production. Georgia Davis Ford, Kyle Hudson, Alex Keith, Bronte Oates, Cameron Patterson. And I'd just like to say what a pleasure it's been to have you guys for the last two years, and you've done exceptionally well to complete your degrees during lockdown. Very proud and best of luck for the future. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved an FDA in Fine Art. Teresa Ashford, Victoria Bateman, Eve Bland, Jill Bland, Billy East, Chloe Harris, Louise Scott, Jenny Waters, and Jessie Wybrew. Congratulations to you all. You demonstrated commitment to your studies in difficult times. This attitude will help you to succeed in the future. You are a fantastic group and we hope that you will keep us informed of your progress. Thank you. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who've achieved an FDA in graphic communication. Rianne Bryan, Amani Ridd, Soul Sparks. Congratulations to all of you. It's been fantastic working with you. Best wishes and good luck for the future from Nigel and myself. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a foundation degree in health and social care studies. Diane Baden-Moore, Ashley Foster, Mayor George, Emma Howley, Lydia Page, Jamie Parker, Rina Sadiki, Grace Story, Louis Drigail, and those who achieved a BSc Honours degree in Health and Social Care, Hattie Amos, Kira Davy. Alicia Down, Amy Harvey, Nikki Richards, Alison Ryder. I also have the pleasure of presenting the following students who have achieved a foundation degree in public services. Ryan Clark, Sam Doherty Lake, Laura Farrimond, Jade Yapsley, and those who achieved a BSc Honours degree in Public Services, Rebecca Dunn Mills and Caleb Stephens. This day marks the culmination of a series of outstanding and in some cases exceptional achievements. We would like to wish you the very best with all future pursuits, whether you are staying in education or are entering the world of employment. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates of 2020, it is my privilege and pleasure to be part of this event at Exeter College. I've had the honour of attending graduations at many of our partners over a number of years, recognising the achievements of all of our graduates and witnessing the associated ceremony and celebrations. However, this year, each of us will only witness in detail the celebrations of a small number of the wider participating community. However, I do hope that wherever you are right now, you will express your feelings and show your appreciation for our graduates. I believe I can speak for everyone when I say that we are truly proud of all of our graduates. I hope they are all proud of themselves, particularly at this time of great challenge. Also, we are celebrating your achievements today. We should also take time to record our thanks to all of those that have helped and supported our graduates on their journey, 
including the staff that have guided and supported you in your studies, your parents, family and friends who have also encouraged you, offering emotional and practical support too. My work has taken me ever farther away from teaching and student contact, but events like this keep me grounded and remind me what is the purpose of my work. But what is my connection with your institution and what is the connection with the University of Plymouth? The University of Plymouth has a long history of involvement in academic partnerships in the UK and internationally, dating back to 1978. The university has over 16,000 students who are not in Plymouth, studying on awards and in the UK and internationally, and it is my job to manage these relationships. The University of Plymouth is proud of our partnership work, which allows the university and our partners to achieve more than can either can do on their own. My team and I are part of the infrastructure that delivers the effective collaboration, working on things like developing new awards or apprenticeships, helping our awards stay current, quality assurance and enhancement, and undertaking joint projects. From this work, I know how dedicated staff on both sides of the partnership are in delivering high quality higher education opportunities. Higher education is an important role in transforming lives and in doing so the regional and global economy and society. Therefore, wherever your career takes you, work to change the world for the better. Finally, graduates, I offer you my sincerest congratulation on your achievements and my warmest wishes for success and fulfillment of your future career and lives. And finally, we announce our diploma courses. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved the professional diploma in accounting. Lydia Roseborough, Joseph Peter Street, Kirsty Abbas, Cameron Augie Howard, Matthew Simmons, Joshua Watts, Connor Woodhouse, Lewis Wright and Shana Lucy Ewell. Well done to all of you and I wish you all the best for the, your future. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved the Level 4 Data Analytics Apprenticeship Standard. Elizabeth Horohein, Laura Hunt, Christopher David Meredith, Joshua Pym, Samuel Prangley, Millie Sanford. Also, I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved the Level 4 Social Media and Digital Marketing Apprenticeship Framework, Joshua Bunch, Georgina Davey, Ella Fielding, Kaylee Walter and James Stephen Whitrow. From all of us in the Faculty of Professional Adult Learning, I want to congratulate you on all that you've achieved um, and say from all of the staff how proud we are of you. We look forward to hearing all the exciting things that you've gone on to do. Thank you. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a diploma in hospitality management. David Alvo Rodriguez and Emily Beth Denning. Uh, both of you have been absolutely fantastic. It has been an honour to uh, be involved in your development over this time and uh, both of you have really achieved not just what in this qualification but what you have both done in your careers and uh, working up at the university. Absolutely fantastic work, well done guys, and I look forward to seeing much more from you in the future. I have the pleasure in presenting the following student who has achieved a level five CIPD diploma in human resource management, Mark Densham. We're very proud of you, Mark. Congratulations, we wish you all the best in the future. I have the pleasure of presenting the following students who have achieved an ICT professional competence for IT and telecoms professionals. Jack Isaacs, Ben Wellesley, Jack and Ben, we wish you the best in your futures and hope you stay in touch with college. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a level 5 Operations Departmental Manager Apprenticeship Standard. Chris Atkirk, Mark Brookman, Jenny Clayton. Jim Lilly, Charlie Pope, Jamie Tucker Last, and Jamie Wengrad. Congratulations, we're incredibly proud of you. We wish you all the best in the future. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who have achieved a Diploma in Leadership for Health and Social Care and Children and Young People Services. Bethany Codd, 
Georgia Crossman, Georgia Gething. I've never been prouder of the graduates for this year as all of you are ex-apprentices have progressed from undertaking a level two and or a level three with me here at Exeter College. I hope that you'll all continue your learning journey and will progress in your very important roles in the sector. I would like to say a huge thank you to you for the amazing jobs that you do, so thank you. I have the pleasure in presenting the following students who've achieved a certificate in English language teaching to adults. Naomi Arnold, Ruri Dalrymple, Andrea Ellis, Rebecca Garzgazi, Camilla Goodchild, Thomas Houghton, Peggy Leblugger, Emma Pallett, Clara Rodriguez Allende, and Kate West. Um, I would like to congratulate you, along with Helen and Catherine, for having been such excellent students and showed such resilience and patience and good humour throughout this really difficult year. And we wish you all the best for your future adventures in teaching. Thank you, Claire. That brings us towards the end of today's ceremony. We have celebrated the success of you, our graduates. However, as has already been acknowledged by our principal, that success would not be possible without the support of your families and friends. We must also congratulate the programme managers and all the lecturers who've gone above and beyond, particularly in these challenging times, to support and nurture all of their students, both academically and pastorally. As we come to the end of this ceremony, I would like to hand over to David Allen, OBE, Chair of the College Board of Governors, to give his closing address. Good afternoon, everybody. Like all of us, I'm sure I never dreamt that I would not be able to congratulate you with a handshake in person this year. But just because we're not in the ancient surroundings of Exeter Cathedral, it doesn't mean that this ceremony is not just as important and as meaningful as ever. And that's because it's not about buildings or robes or fancy speeches, it's about you. It's a celebration and acknowledgement of your success and your hard work. It's to say thank you to all those who have supported you and it's to wish you every possible success and happiness, whatever the future holds. You know, we humans are an adaptable lot and by goodness we've had to be over the past few months. We are adaptable not because of evolution, it just doesn't work that quickly, but because of education. We learn quickly and we pass on our learning. We find out new things through research and innovation and apply them in our daily lives. So that's why, despite the huge challenges we face, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful because of you. You've stuck at it and you've achieved your dreams. When I look at the list of programmes in the brochure, I'm really struck by their vocational content. In his new book, Head, Hand, Heart, David Goodall points out that our society has reached peak head. That is the idea that the cognitive achievement is valued above all, whereas in fact, technical and caring skills are just as valuable and much more difficult to replace through automation. So it's that balance between head, hand and heart which Exeter College seeks to achieve and which is reflected in your achievements today. Some of you will become teachers, carers, engineers or accountants. Others will write or make music. But all of you will be of service and make a contribution to our society. I also know that many of you are going on to further study in university, so I hope we've prepared you well for that experience. Reading through the programme for today, I was so pleased to see the inspirational comments of your programme leaders and lecturers, which I really hope will encourage you in the future. On your behalf, I would like to thank all the staff of the College who have supported your journey, especially over the last few challenging months. The College is now fully open again in a COVID secure way, which is as it should be, since we are here for our learners. I would also like to thank Ben Page for his inspirational address. Ben is a great role model and ambassador for the college. Finally, which I know is the word you've been waiting to hear, I would like to leave you with the words of Professor Stephen Hawking, 
no slouch himself when it came to dealing with adversity. Remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. And however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. It matters that you don't give up. Thank you for listening.